Maybe these are not men, not like us. It's no secret the War of the Worlds has religious references. After all, it has a man wearing a collar, and there are some people praying in a cathedral somewhere. While some may find the inclusion of God, a pastor, and his Bible intrusive, it's much more deep than you realize. We take a look through a modern contemporary lens at a movie over 67 years old with Religion of the War of the Worlds. Isn't it curious how everything about them seems to be in threes? Their eyes have three lenses, three distinct pupils. The number three has always been important in the lore. The H.G. Wells novel described the Martian machines walking on tripods. In the film, they have three eyes, three fingers on each hand. They assemble in threes, and the number is important to Earthlings as well. Number three to D.O. Number three to D.O. Get in back of Hill Faree. Repeat. Hill Faree. There are three scientists, three deputies. Shot after shot, early in the movie, the camera looks to put three in a frame. Why is it important? Three is the smallest number you can have defined as a group. This took office of us at the lookout up in the summit. I thought you might be interested. Assimilation has long been a practice of religious groups to welcome or convert others to embrace the beliefs of the majority. Dr. Forrester's conversion scene comes at the square dance. He and Sylvia sip pop and the doctor tells a very nerdy joke. It serves little purpose until we see what happens next. The deputies came across their own visitor. One even yells at them to come out. Hey there! Open up! Come on out! Here's some advice. When visited by aliens from another planet, don't start making demands and approach them waving your arms like a nut. Hey, the town of Linda Rosa is of a single mind. They even cry out together. As if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. They represent the religion of humanity when invaded. In War of the Worlds, it is man versus Martians, or the God-fearing versus the godless. Who do you think is the story's most important character? You're likely to choose Dr. Clayton Forrester. Gene Barry does take top billing and looks good in those glasses. But he really doesn't do anything. He gives opinions, most of them unproven. He had plans for science to save humanity. But humanity thought differently. Forrester did severely injure a Martian though, but we'd expect more from someone who made the cover of Time magazine. Then there's Sylvia. She isn't your stereotypical female protagonist from the 50s. She has a master's and into library sciences. Sylvia's role seems to be driving a school bus, looking frightened, and bring coffee to the men. No, the most important and influential character is Dr. Pastor Matthew Collins. That's right, he's a doctor. Kind of puts him on equal footing with Forrester, doesn't it? He overrules military strategy, literally decides when to shut down social gatherings. Well, we always play good night, ladies, at 12 o'clock anyway. It must be nearly that now. And gives marriage advice. Other than a rhetorical, how do you do? Not one person asks Uncle Matthew for his opinion, but he gives them anyway. He throws himself in the center of every conversation. By the way, he's introduced in the movie Promptly Taking Center. This is during a time where a religious character would own a presumed, unquestioned authority, and Uncle Matthew was no different. Let's examine the first military scene early in the first act. Uncle Matthew shows up uninvited, but reminds the military colonel of his standing in the community. Take notice how Uncle Matthew shows displeasure when learning of the military's plans to attack. He towers above the colonel. In his mind, his beliefs matter most. Uncle Matthew walks out of the bunker, much like someone walking out of a church in the middle of a sermon. This can be taken in a couple ways. He's leaving the flock, perhaps humanity. This foreshadows his demise that comes soon later. 
But if you see the soldiers and Dr. Forrester more as parishioners, and the Martians are the new religious leaders, another ominous foreshadow. I've been fascinated in Uncle Matthew's motive to stand up to the Martians. Why did he do this? Could it be Uncle Matthew is humbled in the awesome power of God and his creations, or sees creatures from another planet with no knowledge nor care of his God? But let's back up and pay attention to something else he says. If they're more advanced than us, they should be nearer the Creator for that reason. Someone of faith searching for answers who create us? Does this sound familiar? How do you know? Hmm? I don't. But it's what I choose to believe. That's right. This blend of science fiction and religion came long before Prometheus. He gave peace a chance and wound up starting an interplanetary war. It's easy to mock Uncle Matthew's walk to the Martians. Carrying nothing but a cross and a Bible, his faith was surely not enough. To many, that would have been obvious. The military didn't fare any better. In fact, we can say Uncle Matthews didn't do worse. In terms of military might against the Martians, Uncle Matthew was an equal. Scientists are also guilty of terse conclusions, but were they open-minded? When Dr. Forrester brings back Martian blood to Pacific Tech, a doctor makes a rather glib comment. They may be mental giants, but by our standards, physically, they must be very primitive. Another reassures the bomb will solve everything. Oh, let it go. If you're interested in Martian blood, get all you want right after the plane drops the bomb. But science could not stop the Martians' advance, leaving them only six days to conquest. I have to be forgiving how the 1953 film depicts the end of days. I found the evacuation out of Los Angeles a little too polite, but the symbolisms are there when society collapsed. We see the end through Dr. Forrester's eyes. He fails to even begin researching a biological solution. The angry mob overpowers him. It's every man or woman on their own. The cooperation and unity seen in the beginning is destroyed. Dejected, Dr. Forrester looks for churches and cathedrals for Sylvia. On his second cathedral, he finds two scientists taking refuge there. With Forrester, that made three, and the film absorbs and converts them. With the Martian machines closing in outside, it looks humanity has come to its end. It's the film's most terrifying moments, where the survivors pray, beg, and panic. On Forrester's third attempt, his third house of worship, he is reunited with Sylvia. As the church crumbles around them and all hope abandoned, a strange silence blankets the city. The Martian machines come to a stop. The humans crawl out from the shadows and reclaim Earth. Though the film mentions a scientific explanation, germs, that doomed the Martians as soon as they breathed our air, the narrator reminds us by the littlest things that God and his wisdom put upon this earth. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think I was too cynical about religion? Does War of the Worlds hold up as a classic? This is Mr. Geosynergy saying, don't fool around with something you don't know what it is. Check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.